My name is Sister Bernadette. I'm a member of the Franciscans of Halifax, and I want to thank you for joining us in our next video of the Communion of Saints. Before we get to our great saint of the day, I'm going to uh, start with a little quiz question. So, our question today is, who first used the term Catholic? Who first used the term Catholic? It wasn't always used in the very beginning. So who was the first person to use the term? So think about it. Put your suggestions in the comments below and we'll find out at the end of the video if you are right. Okay, so our saint today is Saint Margaret of Cortona. Margaret was born in 1247. Her parents were poor farmers. Her mother was a very pious Catholic who did everything she could to teach Margaret about the faith and instill the faith in Margaret. Her father, however, hoping for a son, had little use for Margaret. At the age of seven, Margaret uh, was devastated by the loss of her mother. Her father quickly remarried, and the stepmother treated Margaret very harshly, did not have much love for Margaret. Uh, when Margaret turned 18, uh, Margaret ran away with a man uh, who she lived with for many years and had a son with him. Uh, they never married and got into some very questionable uh, dealings. Uh, very much a life of scandal. Um, they were said uh, the man was of noble blood, uh, but that is not, not confirmed. Uh, one day, Margaret was at home, and uh, the man's dog came to Margaret, and she found it very odd that the dog was not with him, as the dog was always accompanying him. And the dog was urging Margaret to follow him. Margaret finally eventually got up after the dog's persistence and followed the dog deep into the woods to the body of the man, brutally murdered, blood everywhere. Margaret, at the shock of seeing this, uh, her mother's teachings came back to her and she cried out, but where is his soul? Margaret at that moment, uh, although having lived a life of great sin, resolved to live a life of even greater penance for her sins and those of the man who had died. Uh, she quickly gave away all her belongings, took her son, and went back to her hometown and donned the garb of the penitent, which is rags and a cord around her waist, with no footwear either, barefoot. She went to the steps of the church and declared herself a penitent and declared her sins aloud to the, to the edification of many of the people in the town. However, uh, her father and stepmother only made them more angry with her and refused to let her and her son back into their family home. Margaret was very upset by this and very tempted to return to her way of life before her life of sin. But through God's grace, working through her and through those around her in the town, um, Margaret did not. Instead, she retired to the town of Cortona, which was nearby, and lived in a hovel there, uh, and serving the needs of the poor. Uh, the Franciscans there, uh, one became her spiritual director and confessor, and she went to confession frequently. Uh, Margaret felt a great desire to become a Franciscan, but her director would not permit it until after much persistence and three years later. She was finally able to don the garb of the Franciscans. Um, Margaret, for the next 28 years, served as a Franciscan, uh, serve the poor. She started a hospital for those who could not afford to go to the hospital, the impoverished, um, the mentally insane, the those who needed aid but could not get it found in normal society. Uh, to ensure that her hospital would continuously have a flow of nurses, she founded a congregation called the Congregation of the Poverello, or the Little Poor Ones. Margaret cultivated a very deep, deep prayer life and uh, was blessed with many visions of Jesus. In one of the visions, uh, Jesus appeared to her and said, what is it you wish, my little poor one? Margaret's response, and I think sums up her life quite well, was that, I neither seek nor wish for anything but you, my Lord Jesus. Margaret, um, died in 1297 on February 22nd, which is also her feast day. Um, I think what I 
I love about her life and what inspires me in her life is that temptations to return to her life of sin never stopped. She was constantly nagged by them, but through determination, through prayer, through the aid of others, she was able to continue on. As many times as she almost fell or did fall, she was given the grace and the strength and the courage to get back up and keep going. And I think that can be a model for us all, and especially in today's society. Um, she was canonized in 1728 by Pope Benedict the Thirteenth. Um, she is the patron of the homeless, of the insane, of single moms, of orphans, and of reformed prostitutes. Uh, her life is, I think, a very beautiful one, and the miracles occurred even after her death. Her body, body, sorry, is partially incorrupt and emits an odor of flowers. Um, as I said in previous videos, the miracles that have occurred during her life and even after her life, once again, were not for her, but were for the witness of the church to strengthen the faith of the church. Margaret's life was definitely, um, beginning of her life anyways, not one anyone would wish or aspire to, um, but through perseverance, through faith, through God's grace entering her life, she was able to rise above those circumstances and become a saint, to become a great saint. Um, not the type of life anyone really wanted, wants in the beginning, but with the help, with perseverance, with strength and with courage, much can be achieved. Um, it is said that her son uh, eventually became a friar as well and was noted for his holiness and charity towards the poor as well. So Margaret did well, did well in instilling in him uh, the teachings that her mother had taught her. Um, so that is the life of Margaret of Cortona. Uh, I encourage you once again to, if you uh, enjoyed this little tiny glimpse into her life, to to continue to research it and to to seek it out, to seek out more about her life. She's a very beautiful, beautiful saint. Um, so I think that's enough about Margaret. So once again, I encourage you, go look her up. Um, but we will get now to the answer of our quiz question. So to remind you, the question was, who first used the term Catholic? Well, it was St. Ignatius of Antioch in approximately 110 AD is when the term Catholic was first used. Catholic, as we know, means universal. So St. Ignatius of Antioch was our saint and our answer to the quiz. So if you enjoyed this video, if you would like to see more, please hit the like and subscribe button and stay tuned for more. All right. Have a great day.